Becoming a doctor is like winning the Immigrant Olympics. The combination of high job security, high status, and high pay essentially is what the immigrant dream is. But it's a long path. Even if you get to college, you have to go to medical school. Even if you get to medical school, you have to go to residency. And you might match into a place if that's in the middle of Iowa. I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. So let me get to the point. It's really hard and most people don't become doctors. But what if I told you that it wasn't a conspiracy theory, that it's not just some far-flung idea that they're limiting the supply of doctors in order to make it harder for you to apply to med school. I've been thinking about this graph a lot and it shows the US population increasing but the MD school matriculants staying constant between 1980 and 2005. This graph explains why it's so hard to become a doctor in the United States today. Let's go back to the 90s. People had crazy hairdos, fashion was interesting, and the HMO was just becoming a thing. You may ask, what's the HMO? Glad you asked. It's the Health Maintenance Organization, which essentially means that we're limiting the amount of doctors that you see. Now, there were a lot of people who thought that this was going to cause a physician surplus. Add on top of that, that we were already paying hospitals $54,000 to hire new resident physicians, which are physicians in training, and we were only paying them $30,000. We were essentially handing out free $24,000 checks to hospitals. So people thought, we were increasing the supply of physicians and we're limiting the amount of physicians that patients can see, we're probably going to end up in a physician surplus. In parallel, Congress reduced the first year postgraduate residency spots and also capped the amount of money that hospitals were going to get. So they reduced the amount of physicians entering the workforce every year also. But in a twist of fate, this was completely wrong. We actually ended up in a physician shortage because of these two measures. And I just thought, non-healthcare people making decisions for healthcare personnel, what could possibly go wrong? That moratorium on medical school applicants getting into medical school was quickly reversed when they realized that we actually were in a shortage, but the damage had been done. The residency spots which were capped still remain in the same allocation as 1997. And even if you're trying to add residency spots, the US healthcare system won't pay for it. It'll probably have to go through private means. The residency spots that we compete for are still stuck in the same level as 1997. To change this, an act of Congress would need to be passed in order to expand the budget and spend more money on medical resident training, which in 2022 is kind of hard to do because both sides of the aisle can't agree to anything, much less spending more money on people who are going to earn way more in three or four years. They don't want to spend money to increase these spots, so we're stuck in 1997 levels of funding in 2022. Becoming a physician is a long and confusing path, and this is because of two reasons. One is the financial burdens, and the second is the opportunity cost. Let me tell you about the financial burdens first. Medical school is really expensive, yo. The reason medical school is this expensive is because of the tuition and fees. They cost $115,279 on average, and this keeps going up year after year. This also doesn't include the cost of board exams, board prep resources, study resources, and your living arrangements which can add to the total. Even though students are saddled with all this debt, they still keep applying because it's their dream to becoming a doctor. And I'm not getting in the way of that. All I'm saying is that you have a 36% chance of getting accepted and you have to think long and hard whether you want to deal with that debt later on. If it is you, great, you should do medical school. But if you're having an inkling of doubt, it might not be for you. Try something else before you come into medical school because you'll have that gap year of experience to tell you, do I actually like doing medicine or is it just some expectations that I have that it's not really going to pan out because the financial burdens of that can be severe. Let's go over some of the costs that it takes to apply to medical school. Filling out the application costs $170 and then it costs $40 for every additional school that you apply to. You also need to factor in paying for the MCAT which costs $315 along with any study resources that you use which can add to the total. Finally, you also have to account for secondary applications which is an additional application for every school that 
you need to fill out in order to gain an interview. All in all, you might find yourself spending thousands of dollars in order to apply to medical school. And if you're reapplying, then double that because you're going to have to do this process twice or even three times before you guarantee an acceptance from a medical school. This is where the opportunity cost comes in. Even though you have a stable income and you might be working a job with a high salary, you're still behind all of the classmates that have graduated 10 years before you and they've been working all that time and saving and putting that away and compound interest has been working in their favor. You're going to have to work in order to get rid of your loans while compound interest has been working against you with an interest rate on the loan that you're going to have to pay off as well. Because of these financial burdens, a lot of people don't think about becoming doctors. But if you're still interested in medicine and you want to be a physician, then this path is for you. All I'm saying is you should think about these options before getting into something that you might not enjoy. Even though you may get respect being a physician because of the rigors of your training at the hospital, the reality is that it's just an everyday job. Even though you're making a great salary as a physician, and I'm not knocking the salary, it's still capped by the hours you work, and the time in equals money out. So therefore, you need to be able to see a lot more patients, which may drive you to burnout like we see a lot of doctors have. This brings me to another point of about debt and specialty choice. Derek Thompson from The Atlantic writes that American medical students are more likely to become specialists where they tend to earn some of the highest doctor salaries in the world, in part because the US does such an efficient job at limiting the supply of their labor. This is the reason that most physicians, while burned out and they need the extra help, limit to increasing the labor supply. It would limit their salary as well. However, I would argue that this is untenable because in a system where people can't even get access to a physician, it's unlikely that the current number of physicians can really spread out across a country, which is not the case already, and in rural areas, you can get access to a physician. The salary drives a lot of people to becoming a physician. It's true, it's a low risk job with a high payout. And over time, if you put in the time, you'll get hundreds of thousands of dollars. But on the flip side, you have to make the decision for yourself whether you want to join a system that will potentially burn you out and also may test you to the limits of your patience, your persistence, as well as your focus. Finally, societal expectations drive a lot of people to become physicians. You are not your parents or your friends or anyone else who's telling you to become a physician. You are your own person and you need to figure out whether medicine is something for you and whether you want to actually become a physician and you can make your own path. You don't need to do something just because someone else is telling you to do it. I think being a doctor is one of the most important jobs on the planet. You need to have the right motivations to do it though and you need to understand and what you're getting yourself into for the next decade of your life, which is honestly a majority of people's life when they get into medical school. You're 22 years old. By the time you're 32, that's when you'll finish medical training and you'll start your first real job. But it's definitely a tough route and I just want you guys to be prepared before you jump in.